Guys, what's going on? My name is Ryan. I trade ETFs and I like to make videos of the technical analysis that I'm seeing in the charts. Today we've got GDX, the senior miners, and we are on the daily chart. First thing that we see from the daily chart is that we have this six year resistance line coming into play. Uh, we recently had a touch off here in late 2016 and this long term support line coming through here and supporting us very nicely here once and twice. We are coming into what might be an apex um, and I expect volatility to pick up highly in the coming days and weeks. Because we are at a bottom of this channel here, we've had uh, we've been rejected here, rejected here, supported, supported, supported. Uh, so we are at the bottom of this channel, and if this support holds, I can see us moving back upwards here to about the twenty-five dollar range. But we'll get into that on smaller time frames. It's hard to call that right here. Uh, last but not least, I'm very, or maybe not. I've got one more thing to note here in the daily chart. We've got this long-term hooping pattern, which I'm very proud of. And uh, if you want to hear me go into that in a little bit more depth, uh, you can look at past videos. But as far as fundamentally on miners, I just wanted to talk about some uh, fundamentals because I tend to do about 95% technical analysis and about 5% fundamental. So this is your 5% fundamental analysis on miners and why I am potentially bullish on GDX here in the short, medium, and long term. Uh, so I'm just going to read from this. The gold to silver ratio is at an extreme level only observed several times in recent history. In each instance, following such a skew, precious metals prices and their derivatives move, moved up dras drastically. GDX is comprised of stocks that sometimes overshoot to the upside as well as to the downside at times. This pullback appears to be a healthy natural correction and the fundamentals surrounding gold prices seem favorable for the most part. Further, gold prices are trending above $1,200, which is extremely favorable for gold mining companies. In fact, many miners would still be making a, prices a profit if prices were significantly lower. I think this is a common misconception of many people is that mining companies are barely scooting by with gold being so low, quote unquote. Uh, but they are making uh, a lot of profit at these levels. The average minor break-even cost is projected to be mid to high 800s. What's the takeaway from this? We do not believe the current sell-off in GDX is justified and is likely a product of an overreaction concerning the recent correction in gold and silver commodity prices. However, once gold and silver stop their decline, which it appears they are in the process of doing, they will begin to move higher, and we believe GDX could increase in value significantly over the next weeks and months. Uh, if you want to look at my gold, video analysis and recognize that bottoming pattern that I just stated there, I would encourage you to take a look at my gold video. So that's it for the daily. Let's go to the two hour chart. On the two hour chart, I've been looking at this descending triangle for quite some time now. And uh, I see us moving up. We hit our first resistance, A, B, C, D. And I think that we may have just hit E, which is very exciting to me because uh, I'll be taking a trade on this long term prediction. This uh, Descending triangle I've been following and waiting for it to hit this E for the better part of 2017 here. Um, theory says that the breakout should occur 64% of the way into the apex, the apex being right here. Uh, what is 64% of that? Well, I took it from the top of this trend here and stretched it all the way to the apex, and that gave me uh, 827 bars over 295 days. Um, and then I just multiplied 295 days times 64%, and that gave us this range right here. I took this range, drew a light blue arrow, and uh, labeled it 64%. So I'll be very interested in what the price action has for us in the coming weeks and months. As far as our indicators go on this chart, let's just take a look at our RSI. So our RSI here has been moving downwards, and we can see that we finally, after it's been about a month, month and a half, we finally broke out of this level right here. Uh, fairly convincingly getting above it. What's next? Our slow stochastic. We can see that we have a low here and then a higher low. While price makes a low and a lower low, this is a bullish divergence, and we have the same thing playing out here in our CCI commodity channel index. This is probably leading to the pop that we saw this week here in GDX and gold miners in general. Let's go to the one hour chart. So I do want to preface, I did this in my gold video, that I do have a bullish bias. Um, that bullish bias tends to skew my opinion on a lot of charts. It's impossible for me not to have an opinion on something, and uh, that's something that a lot of other you know, daily video charting websites aren't going to give you as an actual legitimate opinion. They'll just say, here's a high, here's a low. If it breaks out above this, it'd be good to take a trade. No, I'm looking at the overall chart and giving you patterns and what I actually think and what I'm actually trading at. Uh, so with that in mind, 90% of this analysis is bullish and 10%, what I'm going to talk about right now, is bearish. So let's talk about the bearish scenario. So if we took a look at the bottom here and then the bottom here, I drew a trend line. This is this black line, and I can see us coming all the way down here to touch the bottom of this black line for a third time. And what's leading me on to think this way is that I think that we might be in an Elliott wave, 
for this downward move. This might have been one, two, three, four, and then we'll have that exhaustion five touch this line before we finally have our breakout here. This would also take place right in the middle of our time signatures right here. And uh, a lot of interesting things occur right when the blue lines take place, as well as in the middle of them. Here we can see we had uh, a low, a low, almost kind of a, a halfway move here. And then um, this middle range right here will come down to five. What happened in the middle here? Well, we had our high in the middle. And we almost had our high in the middle over here. So the middle range is significant. And uh, if this breakout, because I do find this to be a potential breakout right here, uh, because this channel that we've been in for, again, the better part of the last uh, month and a half, two months, decides to roll over and fall back into the channel, then I'll have to do two things. First thing is I'm going to have to readjust my channel. And second thing is I'm going to have to change my short-term outlook on GDX to bearish inside a target for this uh, 2060 range. So from the one hour, let's go to the 30 minute and check out what's going on. So it looks like I've got quite a bit here on the chart, so bear with me. We're going to walk through it one step at a time. First thing we saw is this bear flag take place, and uh, the flag is right here. And what we do for a measured move is we clone this line. We drag it from our high to the low. We clone that, and at the point of breakdown, that's our measured move, and we can see it work out fairly well. Another way that you can do this, and I'll go ahead and just do this on the charts real quick, is draw it from the high to the low, clone it, and then take that from the point of breakout or breakdown. Breakdown happened right here, and this gave us a measured move that was fairly accurate to the bottom right here. So there's two ways to do the measured moves when you see patterns like this. This orange line is our previous bottom from back here. It's a horizontal trend line. And as far as fractal trading goes, looking at historical action, looking at bottoms, looking at tops, and figuring out what happened then, and then trying to recognize a familiar pattern on another side, I have this circle here, and I find it fairly interesting that if you look at this here, we had two bounces, we moved sideways, we had our ultimate bottom, and then we moved up and we fell back down before we moved up convincingly. Over here, we have these two bounces, move sideways, ultimate low, we came back up, we rolled over, and then we're starting to move up higher right now. So that's fairly interesting to see the same type of action coming into play over here. As far as patterns for next week goes, I see this inverse head and shoulders and this red line here would be the neckline. Uh, but at the same time, I also see this possible ascending triangle taking place here. So if this is a head and shoulders, a break of this neckline right here would be very positive for GDX and miners. And if this is an ascending triangle, which I have reason to believe it is, the correlation in gold and miners has been increasing, which is positive um, in recent weeks. I just read an article on that today. And uh, it's funny to note that I have a similar analysis on the gold chart as well. But if this is a ascending triangle, I would see us going from going down to C here. So I could see this is our resistance. We came down, touched support. This is A, B, we just hit B. We'll come back down to C, D, E before breaking out. So what originally led me to believe that this might be an ascending triangle is that we see some divergences here, particularly in the RSI. We see that we moved sideways to downwards here while our price moved sideways pretty much. But we did have two hidden bullish divergences here, and that's where our indicator makes a lower low, but price makes a higher low. We see that here with our first low in price and our first low in our oscillator. Our oscillator makes a lower low and our price makes a higher low. This is a hidden bullish divergence, and we saw that play out right here. This on the 30-minute chart is probably all we can expect from this hidden divergence. However, the RSI one is more significant. So as far as predictions go for next week, I see us moving downwards, hitting this short-term support area here at C. If we find support here at C, I can see us completing the rest of this pattern fairly easily, breaking out, retesting, and then moving higher. And if we get if we break down from C, I would take the bullish side of my trade or the bearish side of my trade and uh, expect us to come to touch this multi-month support level off of the bottoms and complete the five wave Elliott wave here uh, with our one, two, three, four, and five down here. Last but not least, let's check out my uh, how I did last week and what I was kind of expecting. So GDX decision time said we hit my final E in the descending triangle. I expect us to rise and chop sideways for a while, perhaps forming an inverse head and shoulders, then flag out, creating the handle, and then break out. If you, if you were ever to take a bet on gold, this may be the ideal opportunity, though I'm unsure how earnings next week will play into this equation. I had this drawn out as far as my prediction, and uh, it looks like we moved up, and uh, I'm kind of expecting us to do the flag out portion right now. This was my target two. My first target was right here, target two down here. So that has been my analysis for GDX gold miners. 
this week. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did get anything up from this and uh, you want to follow me into my analysis next week and perhaps intro week, if some interesting things happen for GDX, please like and subscribe this video. It helps me out so much. Um, I've been getting a lot of positive feedback from you guys, and I really appreciate that. So hopefully this gives you some direction for next week's trading. Please check out that gold video. It'll help create a more wholesome picture of what's going on for GDX miners as well as gold itself. And I wish you the best of luck in trading next week. Bye, guys.